Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready for the SAT. It is the recommendation of Prince George's County Public Schools that most students take the SAT during the spring of their junior year. No student should take the SAT without prior preparation, and it should be known that it takes approximately four hours. During this program, you will become familiar with how to approach the different types of questions on the SAT, how to work within time constraints, and how to look for clues to reason through complex questions. Welcome to the SAT Essay Writing Strategies. Today, we are going to review strategies that you can use to attack the SAT essay. Are you ready? Let's get started. First, some general information about the SAT essay. The essay is always the first section of the SAT. You will have 25 minutes to write the essay. The maximum score is 12. The essay will be scored by two people on a scale of 1 to 6. Both scores are added together. In rare cases, a third reader is necessary. Essays written off topic will receive a zero. The essay is worth approximately 30% of your overall writing score. To help you do better on the SAT essay writing, we're going to look at a sample prompt today from an old SAT. Think carefully about the issue presented in the following quotation in the assignment below. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the assignment. Is prior failure necessary for success, for future success? I'm going to stop there. I'm going to underline and highlight some things that I think are important. Prior failure, future success. The next part, plan and write an essay in which you develop your point of view on this issue. Support your position with reasoning and examples taken from your reading, studies, experiences, or observation. That next part is the same on every SAT. It never changes. So once you've read it once when you're practicing, you don't need to read it again. After I've read it, I decide, is prior failure necessary for future success? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to write that right here with exclamation points. After I read that, I'll go up to the quote that's above it in the little box. Failure is the only opportunity to begin again more intelligently. Henry Ford. You can't have any success unless you can accept failure. George Cukur. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Thomas Edison. After I read the quote, I will think, is this something that I can write on yes or no? Yes, I think future success depends on prior failure. Once I've decided that, my next step is to do some brainstorming or pre-writing. And I'm going to do that right inside the test booklet just like this. Success depends on prior failure. I'm going to write that right in the test booklet. I'm going to call that my thesis statement. Then I've got to have three supports. Two or three supports will work fine. I always try to have three supports, but if I can't have three, I need at least two. My first support that I'm going to come up with will be something personal, something related to me. So I'm going to think about something. When was a time when I succeeded because I failed? And that's going to be a personal example. Well, for me, I'm going to write my support right here, right below my thesis statement. Support number one. I'm going to write personal. And I'm going to think about a time when I didn't study, so I failed. I learned my lesson. The next time I decided to study, and I succeeded. So I learned that the failure resulted in success. My next support, support number two, I'm going to try to think of something historical or something in current events. Support number two. History. I'm going to think about a time in history when somebody failed and then later succeeded as a result of that failure. There's one thing that comes in mind in history. I think about the American Revolution. After the American Revolution, our forefathers wrote the Articles of Confederation. That was a failure. 
But as a result of that failure, they wrote the Constitution, which was a success. So I'm going to use that as my support. The Articles of Confederation and the Constitution. Now at this point, I want to think about a third support. Usually for a third support, I try to find something in literature, something that I've read in a book. That, always, that doesn't always work. I do the best I can. If I can't come up with a third support, I use one of the other two as a third support, either another personal or another historical. Or I just extend those two supports and then write a little bit of a conclusion, which is always a good idea. Let's see if we can come up with a third support in literature. So I'm going to write that on my sheet just above everything else because I'm running out of room. Support number three, literature. Well, this is a tricky one. It's difficult to think of any fictional character who at one point failed and then later succeeded. There's a lot of different options for this. But right off the top of my head, if I can't think of anything, then I'll just stop because I don't want to spend too much time. Always give it a shot, though. Usually I try to think of something in some, uh, from a book that I've read recently, perhaps a book I've read for school or a book I read over the summer. And if I can't think of anything, then I'll just skip it and go right to writing the essay. After I've written the essay, I always want to proofread the essay. I always try to give myself about 15 minutes to write the essay. This process here that I've done of pre-writing, brainstorming, that usually takes me about six or seven minutes. Since I have 25 minutes total, I'll usually spend about 15 to 17 minutes writing the essay, and then I'll still have another one to two minutes to proofread. These are my essay writing strategies, which you can look at now. The first thing I always do is I read the assignment. Remember, the first sentence of the assignment is the only thing that really matters. Everything after the first sentence will be the same. Then I decided on a preliminary point of view. Remember, I wrote yes. Some of you might have written no. That's okay. That's fine. Then I read the quote or quotes that are in, a box, that are in the box above the assignment. After I read those quotes, I decide, is this something that I can write about? I say yes. I start to brainstorm and pre-write right in the test booklet. Then I want to make sure I confirm my point of view. That's very important. You never want to change your point of view halfway through writing the essay. After I feel really confident and I'm ready to write the essay, then I write the essay on the answer sheet. Here's what the answer sheet looks like. That's all the space I have to write my essay, front and back. That's all the space they're going to give me. I can't go beyond this space. That's very important to know. After I'm finished writing the essay, I always want to leave about two to three minutes to proofread the essay. That's very important as well. When I'm proofreading, I'm just looking for any places where maybe I missed a period, maybe I need to add a comma, nothing major, just minor editing. After I'm done proofreading the essay, I feel like probably I won't have any more time to do, make any major changes. That's where you want to make sure that you've written enough on the topic. Remember, you have a limited amount of space, but you want to fill up that space as much as possible. You don't want to leave a lot of blank space on your essay writing answer sheet. So you want to fill up about all of the front and at least half of the back. But always remember, you have to stay on topic. Essays that are not on topic will receive a zero. Always have to remember that. Stay on topic. So the last thing that I want to remember as I'm going through the essay is I want to write as much as possible, but I want to stay on topic. In the end, I should have a four or five paragraph essay that has an introduction, two or three supports, and then a conclusion. It's very important to remember that you do not have to write a four or five paragraph essay. If you have a different type of essay that you're comfortable with, go with that. The one thing that I always recommend to students is to go with the essay style that you're most comfortable with. Most students know the five paragraph formatted essay with a thesis, two or three supports, and a conclusion. That's why I recommend it, because my students are familiar with it. Always go with what you're most comfortable with writing. That's what's going to give you the best score.